Hello, welcome. Um, I wanted to do this short video on some information on the new DJI Phantom 4. Um, I'm not going to do an unboxing or nothing like that. I want to talk about some specific information, um, some technical stuff and just the bits and pieces you may need to know. Differences between the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4, what works, what doesn't. Just some stuff around the battery. Um, we will start with the controller, I think. We'll start there. Model of the controller that comes with the Phantom 4 is the GL300C. This is the same version of the controller that DJI were shipping with the last versions of the Phantom 3. It's virtually identical. The only differences are, number one, they now supply the metal bracket, which they didn't do with the Phantom 3. Number two, instead of having a playback button, it now has a pause button on the side. Now, this controller does not come with the HDMI board, just like the Phantom 3 didn't, but you can fit the HDMI board from the Phantom 3 to this controller and it will work. So the HDMI board that DJI sell on their site, the accessory board, will fit. You install it, it will do a firmware update and it works with controller firmware 1.5.80. And that gives you all the same outputs as the Phantom 3 did. You've got your HDMI, your micro USB, your CAN port and your normal USB port. Other than that, the controller is just the same. On controllers, what controllers will work with the Phantom 4? The GL300C does, which is the Phantom 3 latest and Phantom 4 controller. They are That's what is officially supported. Unofficially, the GL300A and B do both seem to work with the Phantom 4. You can bind them to the Phantom 4 and it will work. Inspire controllers, officially the C revision, I believe, is meant to work. But again, it does seem like all of the revisions of the Inspire controller will also work with the Phantom 4. And they have the HDMI board already fitted and that just works. Moving on to the battery. It's a newer, larger battery, different shape, different size, completely different unit to the Phantom 3. It's 5350 milliamp hour now. It is still a 4S battery, larger capacity. There is a new connector on this battery, which is now located on the bottom. Unlike the Phantom 3, which had it on the side, the new connection is on the bottom. This connector is reversible, so the, the adapter comes with this quite large connector. It just plugs in like that, but it is also reversible, so you can use it either way. Now, these batteries are not compatible with the Phantom 3 chargers. The connection is completely different. Sadly, it's a whole new connection, and you have to have the Phantom 4 adapter. The wattage of the adapter that comes with the Phantom 4 is 100 watts, the same wattage as the adapter that came with the Phantom 3 Professional. In theory, you could use Phantom 3 adapters if you could get this connector. However, I have been unable to source anything like this so far. So currently, if you want to charge more than one battery at once, you will have to purchase another DJI adapter. On the battery itself, the same rules apply for this as they do the Phantom 3 battery. Try to store them at 50% whenever they're not in use. Um, and, and that's about the only thing I can say on the battery. The craft. Some things you need to know specifically. We'll start with the top and the new propellers. DJI have fitted quick release propellers on the Phantom 4. Really nice addition, similar to the design they used on the last version of the Inspire 1. Make it really quick to put on and off. As with quick release, all quick release propellers, there are some advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are they go on nice and quickly. The disadvantages is this is a wear and tear part. You want to regularly inspect these adapters. Make sure that they are in perfect condition. Look at them before every flight. Make sure all of the lugs are in perfect order. You will also want to replace these periodically. 
as I said, these are going to be a wear and tear part. These are all that are holding your craft in the air. This is it, nothing else. So it is not worth risking losing a craft for, for adapters that are worn. So every, personally, every 15 to 20 hours, I will replace these adapters. I may even do it sooner if I'm perfectly honest. They will be cheap. The adapters for the Inspire were cheap. The props are available for the Phantom 4 already. They are fairly cheap. So the adapters will be as well. I can't stress enough on the adapters how important it is to regularly change them. On the rest of the body of the craft itself, it's similar to the Phantom 3, the overall shape. Obviously, you now have the dual sensors at the front for object avoidance. The motors are sitting on top of the shell this time. So instead of being in the shell, they're on top of the shell. The gimbal is now integrated into the craft. Instead of having the light bridge unit and everything sticking out below, it is all integrated into the craft. On the side, you've got your micro USB port and your SD card slot. Your camera below with your yaw motor. This time we have dual support on the gimbal instead of a single support. There's the connections there for the camera and everything. Now, firmware updates. I wanted to talk a little bit about this. It is a whole new process on the Phantom 4. DJI decided to move away from the SD card method. People were really struggling with that at times. A couple of reasons, especially on Macs, it could give you issues if you downloaded the file more than once. So DJI have introduced two methods of updating the firmware. The first is via your tablet. So your tablet, your device with DJI Go installed, will tell you there is an update available. It will download the update and it will ask you to connect your tablet to the craft. So you will connect your USB cable from your tablet straight to the craft. DJI supply a little USB cable for this. Sorry, had to run off and get it. And this is it. This has a micro USB port on one end and a USB input port on the other. So you would plug this into your craft. If you were using an iOS device, for instance, you would plug your lightning cable from your iOS device into there and it will update. Now, I noticed the controller for me had to be turned on for the last update. I don't know if this will be the case on all subsequent updates, but on the first main update, I had to have the controller turned on. The second method of updating the craft is via what DJI have just released is the DJI Assistant 2 application. What this is, is this is a PC or Mac application that allows you to update the craft, download your flight logs, and it also allows you to calibrate the front vision sensors. So from time to time, these vision sensors will require calibrating. You connect that in, connect it up, and it will take you through the process. Now, some people have had some issues with doing the calibration. These issues seem to be around screen resolution from what I've been reading. Um, it, they've gone through, the calibration has gone through fine on like a laptop or something with a native monitor installed but some other monitors seem to have given it problems. So if you're getting failed calibration, try changing the resolution on your monitor. Go down, reduce the resolution. If it still gives you trouble, perhaps try another computer. Try a laptop with a screen integrated. It's a fairly straightforward process that you connect it up and it asks you to move the camera and you've got to line boxes up on the screen. It takes about three minutes, three, four minutes. Very straightforward, very simple, and it calibrates the sensors on the craft. As I said, the software also has the option to upgrade the craft firmware directly, so you would just connect your craft to your computer via a micro USB cable and it will update the firmware for you. You can also download your flight logs via that software as well. Whilst talking about calibrations, the same rules apply on this as it did the other Phantom 3. If you are getting gimbal horizon issues, 
you would need to do a cold IMU calibration. So, as I've posted in my other video, get the craft chilled down as much as you can. If it's if it's outside, your outside temperature's below 10 degrees, put it on the patio for 20 minutes with the battery out. I'm not going to recommend putting it in the fridge, but you want to get it as cold as possible. Once you've done that, get your everything set up, your tablet connected to your controller, the DJI Go app open and get it on the calibration screen ready to go. As soon as you are then ready, put the battery in the craft, turn it on and hit the calibration button straight away. The reason for the cold calibration is the IMU is heated. So the second you turn the craft on, the IMU will begin to warm itself up. The cold IMU calibration gives it the widest possible sense of value to look at while it's calibrating. What this will do is help bring down warm-up times. So if you're getting long warm-up times, it'll reduce that. If you're getting gimbal horizon issues, do the calibration and then do a gimbal calibration afterwards, again, on the perfectly flat level surface that you've got it on. When you calibrate it, it has to be on a completely flat level surface. So ND filters. The Phantom 3 fil ND filters are compatible with the Phantom 4. It is the same setup with the lens and screws at the end. However, the lens on the Phantom 4 is very, very lightweight, just like it was on the Phantom 3. It only weighs two grams. You need to make sure your ND filters don't weigh any more than two or three grams. Some of the early ND filters that were released for the Phantom 3 were a lot heavier than that. Don't recommend using them with the Phantom 4. So you're looking for your ND filters that are between sort of two and three grams. Lots out there, Polar Pro, um, Taco RC, uh, SRP, they all make some nice filters. You want to look at the weight. Make sure you get the lightest filters you possibly can to keep any additional weight off the gimbal. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm going to do another video shortly with a lot more information. Please watch it if you've got time.